Thank you for auditing the always positive New Music Review Show hosted by a French professor who sometimes gets to talk about French culture, which I'll be doing today by trying to describe to you the song Sacré Bordel by Big Flo and Ollie. It's a pop song, it's a rap song, you should have a listen to it. And I'm releasing this video now at exactly midnight in France on Bastille Day because I think this song says a lot about France. And in particular, it basically says everything you need to know about French identity. Please forgive my dog being here. It's thundering here in Western New York and he needs a thunder buddy. You wanna say hi, Toby? He's just a little nervous, we'll be fine. Now, before I go, I mean, I'm surrounded by French culture. You know, I have some great posters from, from French movie history. I have a poster from the Cannes Film Festival. I got my dad's amazing wine book. So in 1961, he drove around wine country, picked up a little, you know, drank bottles of wine like this 1954 Chateau La Rochilde. Pretty, pretty amazing object there. And my son, is actually in France at the very moment. He is planning on going to the Bastille Day Parade at the Champs Elysees. I think he's crazy, I wouldn't go there for a million years, but I'm, I love talking about France, I love thinking about France, and wine and cheese and movies and Bastille Day and Champs Elysees, but that stuff isn't really the most interesting thing to me. Especially when it comes to music, the thing that interests me the most is this question of what is it to be French? What is French culture? What is French identity? And that's what this song explains almost better than any other song I've ever heard. Now, I do need to make something clear. You know, this is French rap, but it's probably a little bit closer to what we would call chanson, which is a, a style of French music, a little more for a general audience. It's more about life in general than about personal life. It's a little bit more poetic and perhaps a little bit less street. But still, the life story of these two people, Big Flo and Ollie, merits attention and is in and of itself a kind of French story. They're brothers, Ordonez. You may note that Ordonez does not sound like a French name. Their father is Argentinian and their mother is Algerian. That's a pretty uncommon mix. I've never heard of that kind of mix uh, in France, but this is a lot of what makes France an interesting place, especially right now. As France tries to move forward with its culture and into the 21st century, what does it mean to be French? And this comes from an album, a very good album from this band, Big Flo and Ali, the Ardoñez brothers, who are from, from Toulouse. You might know something else from Toulouse. Antoine de Saint-Duc Exupéry. Uh, lived a lot of his life in Toulouse, if you've ever had the Petit Prince, the Little Prince. So these Toulousian rappers made this album. It's a very good album. I'll discuss the album briefly at the end of this video, We Are The Others, C'est Nous Les Autres. But for now, I just want to focus on this one very important song. Before I do, please like uh, this video because it'll make Toby less anxious. Look at how <laughs> anxious he is. Subscribe. Uh, leave a comment, okay? So I'll, I'll first of all include a link to the video. Just click right above the poster for the Con Film Festival and watch this video. It's a very interesting video. They put themselves in an acrylic box, in an acrylic box, uh, four different places all throughout France, in the mountains, and in Paris, and in Toulouse. And they just sort of sat there recording and rapping and watching people go to them. And as you'll see in the video, they're sort of making a statement about who they are, about French people in general. And before I even really get into the lyrics, because I'm basically going to read all the lyrics and translate them in real time, I'll, t I'll touch briefly on the music. The music is this kind of new form of French chanson hip-hop, which has really, I think, been popularized by Oral Son from last year. I, re I reviewed his album as well, and Stromae. There's a certain epicness, a certain sweep to this music, which I think you can hear. Uh, it starts off with these mournful horns in kind of a minor tone, and it's clear because it is a mournful yet hopeful ode to France. A similar, it reminds me actually a lot of some Stromae production. Uh, lots of play with dynamics, but it's mostly just like drums or not drums. There's some synthesizer guitars that kind of build underneath, and eventually some nice, simple drums are under there. Apparently, these guys are actually trained musicians, so one of the brothers was. Uh, like studied trombone, trumpet, and the other studied uh, drums. And if you listen to the drums on here, they are better than most hip hop drums. Even though they're synthetic, you know, they're made on a computer, they have a kind of weirdly uh, agreeable, agreeable um, syncopation to them. 
So there's some sing-songy parts of the verse. There's parts where the drums get louder. There's some parts where people start yelling musically and stylistically and sort of um, spiritually. This reminds me of another song from another French pop rapper, Diam's, the song Ma France à moi, My France, has kind of a similar feel, some kind of emotional feel there. Um, there's a nice moment in the video where you see this old woman making a French flag, which acts as a break, and it highlights the fact that there's no break in between the two verses. It starts off with Ollie and then goes to Big Flo, but there's no break there. Um, and Big Flo mostly raps a cappella for his entire verse, which is quite interesting, and then ends with a lot more. Now, the song was brought to my attention thanks to uh, my, my home screen on, on my computer is hiphopcorner.fr. It's a fairly good website. It's a news website about French hip-hop. And I just try to, like stay up with what's happening in French hip-hop. And it talked about this song and about the scandal around this song. The artist, Big Flo, said that he was stressed about releasing it. They also said that they intentionally released it during the parliamentary elections in France. Now this is pretty deep in the weeds for French politics, but they had their presidential election, uh, well, a couple of years ago, and then they had their parliamentary elections and what has been discovered I'm sorry, the, the presidential election was last year. The parliamentary elections show that France is really divided. So there was a huge left-wing coalition that failed to get a majority. The centrist president failed to get a majority. And the super right-wing fascists with a capital uh, swastika, they failed to get a majority either. And this is the first time, I think since 97, that there's been such a split uh, sort of Senate in France. So it's interesting that the song is about the split identity in, of uh, the split nature of French identity while it is actually showing a country that is really split. Now, in, in, uh, I was also able to watch an interview that this website pointed me to, uh, Hip Hop Corner pointed me to, sorry, Toby wants to get up. Toby, now you're just out of, now you're out of focus. <laughs> okay. Uh, where well, there's an interview with Big Flo and Ali, um, where they like um, discuss how they were stopped on the street about this song and how people on the far left thank them for the fact that they're finally telling the truth about France. But also right-wing people would stop them in the middle of the street and talk about, okay, Toby, you're done, uh, would also stop and talk to them about how much the song means to them and about how it's telling the truth about France. So already we're, we're having this kind of ambiguity. <laughs> This delicious ambiguity of this song, which is found in the title itself, Sacré Bordel. So sacré means sacred, uh, but it's also, an ex it's also an expression of like, you know, like sacre bleu, right? You know that expression. It's an expression of frustration. Bordel is sort of short for like a bordello, like a whorehouse, but it really means a mess in French. So you could sort of imagine this as being a weird combination of like saying like, F and mess, ugh, but also like sacred mess. And it's this paradox that, that, the, that the song is really trying to get to. Maybe think of it like, like a song called Holy Hell, okay? So, what am I gonna do now? I'm a little nervous that Toby's gonna start barking, but if he starts barking, we'll just deal with it, right? If this is your first time watching, I don't edit my videos, <laughs> so we're doing it live. So what, I'm, what I want to do is I want to take you through, it's very hot in here, it's raining outside and it's very hot. I want to take you through the lyrics because it's a fascinating study uh, that they're putting forth to us. And they start off with the question of the flag. Pourquoi je suis mal à l'aise devant mon propre drapeau? Pourquoi je le vois brandi uniquement à l'étranger ou chez les fachos? Why am I so uncomfortable when I see people, when I see my own flag? Why do I only see it waved abroad or by fascists? Now, I'm just going to stop here for you, the Americans. Because if you're an American, you don't understand. We are weird about our flags. In Europe, you don't wave flags basically unless you're a fascist or a fascist sympathizer or a very right-wing nationalist sympathizer, okay? 
And I, I read a whole political science book about this once. It's pretty interesting. It was explaining how uh, it's because nationalism brought about the disasters of World War One and World War Two, and so Europe lives beyond this sense of nationalism, and America was rewarded by World War Two. You know, so waving flags has never led to our extinction, whereas in Europe it has. So just just in these first two lines, we have this sort of fascinating idea <laughs> that. He only sees the French flag waved. I'm sorry, Toby wants to sit on this bench. Okay, Toby, just go sit on the chair, would you? Let me do my video. Oh. Seriously, you, get, you, better like and, you better like and subscribe for the amount that I'm putting up with this dog. Okay, he's getting comfy. Pourquoi ça, gêne, ça me gêne moins quand je sais celui de l'Argentine ou de l'Algérie? This is a little bit later. And he's saying, why does it bother me less when the flag is an Argentinian flag or an Algerian flag? So this is great, you know, because it's not like Argentina and Algeria don't also suffer from, from nationalism. I mean, I did a video about DJ Snake, uh, who is a, an Algerian musician, who is of, uh, uh, he's a French musician of Algerian descent. And I got many angry messages from Algerians telling me that he is not French. Oh. <laughs> So there's definitely lots of nationalism all over the world, but he's saying he feels more comfortable when he sees an Algerian flag or an Argentinian flag because this is that question of identity and feeling like a connection to something, like not being able to feel the connection to the country where you live. And that's the pain that many immigrants feel in France where they don't feel like they will ever be considered French, which is why the next line, and I'll just translate it, I won't, I won't say it in French, I say that I am French with a hesitant air, as though I, as though uh, <laughs> doubting, as though doubting it was obvious. So this goes back to a question which is at the heart of all French hip hop, basically all French hip hop made by people who are not uh, of European origins, that the question of whether or not you are French is sometimes gate kept, and if your parents weren't French or your grandparents weren't French, then you can't consider yourself. French. So just here in this first verse, in this beautiful, mournful song, we have all these questions of French identity brought out for us. I come from a country where it's always nice, but also where it rains all the time. This is a funny comment on the fact that there are parts of France where it's always raining up north. There's parts where it's always nice in the south. Um, geographically, France is a fascinating place because it basically has all of the climates. <laughs> almost all of the climates in one country, in a similar way that America does, except France is the size of Texas, which any Texan will tell you, to which I respond, and what has Texas done with all that land? I am out of focus. Okay. And then he asks the next question. Dis-moi de ce que je suis le descendant des collabos ou bien des résistants. Tell me if I am the, the uh, descendant of the collaborators or the resistance. So I teach a class on rock and roll and hip hop. And one of the main things that unites the two forms of art is they're constantly questioning the nature of France in World War II. France that was taken over by Germany and the majority of the country were collaborators. They worked with the Nazis. Some of them were resistance. After the war, everybody pretended like they were resistance. It was only when this movie, Le Chagrin la Pitié, The Sorrow and the Pity, uh, came out that really, and this was in the 70s, that France really had to come to terms with the fact that it was largely a nation of collaborators. Which, by the way, uh, I probably would have been a collaborator. So I'm not making fun of the French. I hate the Nazis, but the, the choice was, would you like to see your family murdered in front of you, or would you like to help the invading hordes? I don't know. Maybe I would have been a résistant. I don't know. But I know I would do anything to protect my family. I would go against my morality to protect my family. So, I don't criticize the French for it. But I do criticize. <laughs> and what Big Flo and Ali criticize, and what Ophuls criticizes, and what Renault criticizes, and what Gainsbourg criticizes, what a whole long line of French intellectuals and singers and artists criticize, is the collective amnesia, is the idea that we were all resisting. We weren't. They weren't. The reality is, 
We don't know if we're the descendants of the collaborators or the resistance. Uh, that's just that's just half of my war path, okay? <laughs> like I got four pages of notes here and I'm through half a page. This song is nuts. But on the other side of the world, my first reflex is to look for French people. <laughs> so here we are talking about this weird thing where he, he doesn't feel French in France. And when he's in France, if he feels French, he feels more like a fascist. And then the French themselves are usually just descendants of collaborators. But then when he's abroad, he's looking for French people. This is that great, weird, bittersweet nature of being a traveler and this connection that he has to his country. I love France like an aunt with whom I'm not always in agreement and who works too little for our relationship but for whom I would cry crazy tears from all my body if she died. Do you get it? Do you see why I like this so much? The idea, the idea of, of your, your home country being like an aunt who doesn't work hard enough in your relationship, but who you would cry if she died. Then a quick little line, the police, are these the police of the bavure, which means, uh, les sales bavures, which means like basically the a lot of, there's been a lot of police brutality in France, uh, a lot of riots in the 80s and 90s about police brutality in France, uh, where whenever a police officer would kill somebody in custody, usually an unarmed person, sometimes a handcuffed unarmed person who they would torture and kill, um, it would be referred to as a baveur policière, which means like a, a mishap, a police mishap. So what is the police? Les sales baveurs ou celle en première ligne à l'hypercacher. Sur l'hypercacher, there was the terrible terrorist attack and the police were the first in line to try to stop it. So which police is it? So here we have, just in this first verse, these crazy questions of French identity and of his identity and his identity as an immigrant and then even the question of the police. Are they heroes or are they villains or probably are they both? He talks about saying, you know, if, if, we, if, I, if I take a step back, if I try to cut the pear in half, that's a French expression for finding a compromise. Couper le poire en deux. It's a fun expression. Cut the pear in half. That's a way to sort of find some kind of reconciliatory uh, take on, a, on an issue. When I go to India, I feel French. When I come back, I feel lucky. So this, this real question of, yeah, I talk about this a lot um, with, with my own wife. You know, who's from Serbia, but because of her family heritage, uh, she's not considered Serbian in Serbia, but then when she comes to America, she feels very Serbian <laughs> because those kinds of small differences don't really count. So this guy, these guys may be Argentinian and Algerian and French and all that, but when they go to India, they just feel French. Then another line, another just killer line. On s'aime que après les coupes du monde ou les attentats. We love each other only after the World Cup or the terrorist attacks. So France has had several terrible terrorist attacks in the last few years. And this idea that like that's the only time they can love each other as a country, that they can only really be unified is in these moments. Comme ces familles qui se réunissent que au mariage ou aux enterrements. Like a family that can only get together at a wedding or a burial. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. The, the idea of the World Cup being like a marriage and, these, and, the, and the terrorist attacks being like a funeral. You know, this weird parallel between the family and France. It, uh, it may seem weird to you, but I love my country. A country that <laughs> taxes me and covers me in, in import fees, that pays for my pharmacy bills, that... Uh, that brings me free to see the, the ocean, its history, I know its horrors, but also its power. I am not responsible for its errors, but I must deal with its consequences. So here he is doing what all Americans need to do, all people from powerful countries need to do in the first place, which is not take responsibility for the horrors that you didn't commit, but you do have to deal with the consequences of those horrors, which were committed probably in your name by your ancestors, right? That's the whole point. To be free, I mean, to be honest, uh, me, when I write French, when I write France, I usually write it with an S. This might be a reference to like SS, like often fonts will be written with an SS, kind of like uh, Ice Cube wrote America KKK's Most Wanted. Uh, we make things uh, outside the country when it's less expensive, 
kind of goes on here. Um, me, pa mon padre, my father, <laughs> lives in France, but he dreams in Spanish. Is that a problem? When he writes, long live France, he has a spelling error. So that's just the beginning. That's just Ali's verse. And I want you to go back and re-listen to the song and kind of understand that that's what he's saying and these ideas. And then we get into Big Flow, his brother's, his brother's thing here, where he talks about what is how to be an engaged artist. So the idea of an engaged artist goes back to Mio Zola uh, and before, but mainly with Mio Zola, that an artist needs to be politically engaged in order to be relevant and important. So he's trying to wonder how can you be an engaged artist, a politically engaged artist? How can I be a politically engaged artist quand je sais pas vraiment quoi penser, when I don't know exactly what to think? All that I am sure of is that I am French and that my grandparents were not. <laughs> a beautiful line. And this really is a scandal. And I talk about this all the time on my channel. But when I lived in France, I had many students whose parents were from Algeria, but they were born in France. And me being an American, I have a completely American sense of nationality. So they would tell me that they were Algerian. And I'd say, oh, where in Algeria were you born? Alger, Oran? They'd say, no, no, ici, à Marseille. And, and, and they wouldn't believe me when I told them that they were French. What I love about this song, he's not just challenging the racists who say that you're not French if your grandparents weren't born here. He's challenging his fellow immigrants to say, I am French and my grandparents were not. Ce qui compte, c'est plutôt l'arrivée ou la ligne de départ. <laughs> but what counts? Is it more the arrival or the, de or, uh, the starting line? So seeing this kind of all as a race, like does it matter where your family started or does it matter where you are? Fundamentally, this wonderfully French song about French identity is making a good argument for a melting pot model, a kind of American model of societal integration, which, based on my studies of both countries, would probably be a good thing for France. I'm not saying definitely would probably be good. It would probably help to take some of the American melting pot model and apply it to France. But I'm not an expert. My son knows a lot more about uh, French political science than I do. Maybe he'll start his own YouTube channel someday. I'm very proud of my son. Uh, it keeps going. Et putain, an F word. How much? Et putain, ce que j'aime la France. An F. God damn, I love France for its history, for its chateau, for its cathedrals, for its countryside. I mean, this seems like this is a commercial. This is why the right wing people will stop him because it's actually kind of a badass thing to say, I love France, right? I mean, could you imagine like a left wing rapper in America saying, like, I love America for its barbecue and its bluegrass music and its golden plains? It's kind of outmoded to actually be so positive about your country. For its culture, for its, uh, for its mountains, yeah. He says, eh ouais. And the way that he says it, it's clear in the video when you see it, there's a little pause. And it's like he's saying, yeah. Like he sort of knows it's, as the kids would say, cringe. Mais on se bouffe entre nous comme des cannibales. But we eat each other like cannibals, all in the same boat. Um, no more nuance, we're all radicals, we're all hiding beneath a barricade. And the barricade is the great image of the French revolutions of the 17th and 18th centuries in which they would board up the streets and stop the, stop the country and hide behind the barricade. In 1968, they did the same thing. The barricade is the great image of French resistance. Mais on rejette la faute sur l'autre, mais les autres c'est nous. We put the fault on the others, but the others, it's us. This is that beautiful expression. This is the title of the album. Les autres, c'est nous. This is a fascinating construction because it's based, I believe, on two separate references to French culture. The first being that of uh, Rimbaud, okay, the, the great poet, Arthur Rimbaud, uh, spelled Rimbaud, okay, R-I-M-B-A-U-D, pronounced Rimbaud, who once said, je hais un autre, which is a way of saying, I am 
another. But but he's saying like he's misconjugating être, so it'd be like saying I is an other. She said, one of the most radical sentences in the history of, of French poetry. And then I also think it's a little bit of a play on Sartre, l'enfer, c'est les autres. This, this, con, this construction of da da, comma, da 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 da. C'est nous, comma, les autres. So, si l'enfer c'est les autres, et les autres c'est nous, c'est-à-dire c'est nous, l'enfer. Okay, if, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that in French. It's confusing, okay? Smash the like bucket for me forgetting to speak in English. If, uh, if hell is other people and we are the other people, then we are the hell. And this matches perfectly with Stromae's song of earlier this year, uh, L'Enfer. I did a whole video about that song as well. I'll include a link to that in the description. Do you get the depth of this? Do you see it's a 25 minute uh, video about a five minute song? Oh, I also did a video about uh, Serge Gainsbourg's uh, cover of the national anthem, which you should watch. I did that a couple years ago before anyone watched my videos. Uh, but in the, in the kitchen, there's my grandmother and her Berber tattoos erased. <laughs> So the Berber people are the people that lived in the Maghreb before the Arab invasions, who have their own culture that is totally apart from the rest of the culture of North Africa, or isn't part of that uh, sort of what we normally associate with Arab culture. And part of it is having these tattoos that are being erased. But it's funny because it's actually, it's like a post-colonial point, but it's, it's about the colonialism of the Arabs, not the colonialism of the French. And of course, the Maghreb had one and then the other. It's a, it's a fascinating little detail here. Because I think that I love this country with everything uh, all said and done. When I leave, I only think about my return. She is beautiful, my France and her land, even if it isn't me that she sees in the mirror. I say uh, that one can do it. You can break the floor of glass. Uh, the glass ceiling, sorry. So I love this idea that I love France even if France doesn't see me in the mirror. And this is true. France, sort of with a capital F, doesn't understand, in my opinion, based on my observation of the country, not an expert, I'm not from France, I spent a lot of time in France, I have a lot of French friends. When you say, what does a French person look like? there should not be an answer, okay? There's no little mustaches and berets and baguettes and bicycles, no. The reality is France is white and brown. It's not just one or the other, it's everything. Oh, Toby, yep, that was, some, that was some thunder. You might have to hop back on my lap again. And then it goes on to a whole bunch of different, here, Toby, come here, come here, come here. Toby, I'm so close to being done with this. Video. Okay. I just have to keep him calm or else he's going to bark like a lunatic. Then there's a whole section where they go through different French cultural touch points, and it's really beautiful. Uh, to cry on the sounds of Johnny. Johnny Halliday, the French singer. Um, not one of my favorite French singers of the 60s, but the most important French singer of the 60s. Uh, my father almost saw him perform in concert but he heard some of his music back in 1963 and said, no. <laughs> uh, listen to the sounds of the elders, of, of your elders who say that it was better before. So it's kind of back and forth, a very kind of cynical take on the general belief that things were better in France before. La vie en rose d'Edith Piaf, La vie en rose by Edith Piaf, you know the song, Les Peaux de Pluie de Jacques Brel, Jacques Brel, the Belgian singer who's been taken over by French culture. Faire des sculptures avec le truc rouge qui est autour du baby belle. So this is rhyming two of my favorite things, Jacques Brel and baby bell cheese. I actually went to the supermarket just to get this. So you might not know about this, okay? This is called baby bell cheese right here, all right? It comes in this little, this little net. And what makes baby bell cheese so great is that it comes in this little 
wax wrapper so that you know you get it out of the plastic. I could do without the plastic. That's a little bit wasteful. So you know you get the you get the the, the plastic out and then you open it like this. And you have the cheese. And that's great. And everyone likes eating the cheese. And this cheese, you know, like my son's in France. I'm sure he's had like 30 of these. Like just in general, you go to France, you end up eating so much baby belt. It's a country of 400 different kinds of cheese. But even over there, there's little snack cheese, like this and la vache qui rit. It's not all fancy. You know, th this is one of the most French items in the world. Good cheese. And he's talking about how this is what France is. It's the ability to make little sculptures out of the baby bell cheese, out of this little red thing. And this is the most relatable thing I think that's in the entire song. I think I'm gonna make a little hat for Toby. Oh, <laughs> it's a little beret for Toby. Toby, what's over there? Oh. <laughs> I just, I find this image so pretty, so meaningful. And then it goes on, Que de tour de belle belle, l'heure de l'apéro, uh, which is the time to have an aperitif. So the French also know how to drink. They not only know how to eat cheese and make little sculptures out of the baby bell, they know how to eat, they know how to drink. And there's a certain time where you have an aperitif, you have a little kind of nice light liquor. Pour assumer le goût de bois, to have a, uh, a, a hangover. Uh, to complain when it's too hot and to complain when it's too cold. The France, the, uh, I love it. I want more of it. I am French from my head to my toes. But all these errors that precede us. So here I go for her, a beautiful poem. A sacré mélange, uh, a sacred mixture, a sacred cocktail. Certains tell me that it's uh, fine, but even with all of its problems, I will bring you into my sacré bordel. I will bring you into this sacred mess. So there's the song. All those things all mixed into one, very much in the tradition of Jacques Brel, very much in the tradition of other French singers who are able to sing so much and say so much. But I think it's fascinating because here we have it coming from people whose life experience is not that that we associate most typically with the French. The rest of the album's very good. It's 21, 21 tracks long. It's all very strong. Um, the opening track really reminds me a lot of Stromae and Orelson, that kind of epic chanson rap I've been trying to talk about. Uh, lots of grand commentaries, you know, talking about how it's easier to light a forest on fire than to plant one. In general, the, in, the inspiration I think that's most clear on this album is I Am, the production of I Am, the group from Marseille, who's one of my favorite music groups of all time, period. Um, and Eminem, Eminem's very clearly a huge rapping influence here. There's some songs with Latin sounds, like J'étais pas là. There's some like guests, like MC Solar. There's an amazing parody of the singer Booba, sort of talking about ego tripping in French hip hop. Um, and just in general, it's a very well produced album, but I really want to focus on just this one song, okay? So have a nice, have a nice Bastille day. If you can, get some Baby Bell. Or vache qui rit. Oh, you think you're gonna? Oh, you think you're gonna get some of that cheese, Toby? Do you know how mad? Do you know how mad she would be if I gave you cheese? <laughs> All right. Do, should, I, should I put the little little beret on him again? <laughs> you're a good boy. All right. Well, until next time. Vive la France, Vacanesse.